Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, a fourth year medical student studying medicine, obviously, in Australia. Today we're doing our obstetrics and gynecology outpatient clinic. Hopefully you can hear me over the cicadas. <laughs> These guys have been going off all summer. Um, but yeah, let's get going. someone that runs very very early or very very late. Welcome everyone, I am waiting for rounds to start. It's quarter to eight so they should be coming through the door anytime now but I really wanted to encourage you as we go through women's health and anytime you hear anything on my channel where we're talking about parts of the body that might make you uncomfortable or symptoms try to have an open mind because there are parts of life that are messy and also there's conditions that can be really impactful on people but they're so embarrassed they don't get help and at the end of the day their quality of life is really impacted so I think talking about these things openly uh, with respect and learning about them is not only beneficial for you if you ever feel like you can't talk to anyone but you can also help people that are going through that. As paper rounds begin, the consultant, overnight staff, registers and residents all flock to the meeting room to discuss a variety of patients. These include inductions, deliveries, post-caesarean patients and emergencies like preeclampsia or miscarriage. After that, everyone divides into different parts of the ward. Maternity is so spread out over the hospital. There's post-surgical wards, there's birthing units, theatres and day stay where women might come in for small procedures or examinations. Ramsden are uh, very quiet today just to pro cesareans healing really well. So yeah. now I'll go off to clinic but I need to move my bag. I had it on the high level floor. And with ward rounds all done, it's straight off to the outpatient clinic for me. In the morning is obstetrics, so lots of antenatal care checks. Although midwives manage a huge portion of this, for some patients who have high risk factors, they may require more doctor interactions. In most of these interactions, we check blood pressure, measure the fundus height to compare the baby's growth with its gestational age, and the baby's heart rate with a Doppler. But today we got to use the ultrasound machine, which was certainly in high demand in this department. Um, the morning went really well. We had, I got to see a woman who had a twin pregnancy, so her belly was huge and the ultrasound went really good. You could see the little faces, which was nice. And we also had you know, a variety of patients come in with things like anemia or gestational diabetes and that's kind of where the placenta is telling your body to pump up the sugar so the baby can get to it, but it can become pathological and end up causing problems for both mum and baby. So that always has to be managed. Overall, pretty nice morning. And as always, I get to practice having a feel for where baby is, like getting used to feeling for the head and the fundus, which is the top of the uterus, which I'm really bad at, but I'm hoping with time I'll get a little bit better. <sighs> My measurements are still off when I'm doing the fundus measurements, but yeah, fingers crossed it gets a little bit better. But so now that I've had lunch, we're going to start the afternoon clinic, which is usually more gynecology, which is if they're pregnant, it's before 20 weeks, so it's just other um, female reproductive organ problems. So let's go do that now. So today in the gynecology clinic, I learned about two procedures that I didn't know about when investigating endometrial cancer. Most women that present with abnormal bleeding and thickening of the endometrium, which is usually found on an ultrasound after they've seen the GP for these symptoms, they often require a small surgical procedure where cells can be collected from the uterus. So surgeons will come through the cervix with a scope. They'll have a look around for anything abnormal and take any polyps out, and then they'll take the whole top lining of the uterus out. And this is the lining that usually sheds during menstruation, so it usually comes straight off. 
and then they send all of that to the lab to be examined for any cancer. And while they're in there, they usually put in an IUD to help prevent this excessive cell hypoplasia from coming back. For those in the more low risk categories which have classic endometrial hyperplasia signs that don't have any signs of malignancy, they might do something called a pipette, which I got to see done in clinic today, which is where a very thin plastic tube that has another tube inside can go in and with the negative pressure created between these two tubes they can take a little bit of tissue off and that gets sent off to the labs. So that's the last one done for the day. Most of the afternoon was just gynecological problems like excess bleeding and this seemed pretty common in perimenopausal women but with these women a lot of the time it's benign so it just causes problems like excessive bleeding during menstruation which is always a pain. The last consult was a little bit different. It was about a miscarriage and some of these stories can be quite traumatic for the females but it was good to see how you deal with that grief debrief with the patient as well as then we had a good discussion together me and the reg about some of the causes of that which are really important My car now it's pretty warm that's why the cicadas were going crazy this morning you can see outside beautiful blue skies it's about 34 degrees it's pretty warm and muggy so I think the rest of the day will be indoors at least for the evening and the sun gets a little bit lower in the sky but thank you so much for keeping me company and please please share your experiences and comments I love to hear from you because people's stories help you stay compassionate and know what other people are dealing with and what things you should mention or do better especially if they've been bad experiences so feel free to share comments below or a question you have do let me know and I'll try and get back to you so enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video Thank you.